now let's have a look at gamma ray emission as well. Gamma ray emission is not an actual decay because it is just um, the atom's nucleus giving off energy because it is an, in an excited state. There is no actual change in the nucleus occurring unless um, it is the case with alpha and beta decay. And for the gamma rays from cesium-137 you can see they also have a very long range. As I said, a lot of the radiation is scattered as well. That's why you, of course, get a higher reading in front of the tube than if it's far away. But So let's check out barium-133, which is a pure gamma emitter. It emits 517 kilo electron volts of gamma quantums. The activity of this disk is one microcurie, but the thing is that um, Geiger Miller tubes are not very good at detecting gamma radiation, so the reading is a lot lower than from the 0.1 microcurie of strontium-90. Even though it's ten times the amount, the detected activity is much lower. But more on that in another. But more on that in another video. This is really too much information for a single video. Now let's try again to shield them. The gamma quantums was a thin slice of aluminium foil, and you can see it does nothing at all. Now let's try a slightly thicker slice of al aluminium. And as you can see, nothing at all. As I said, 517 kilo electron volts. That's sort of strong, so you can see it has a lot of penetration power. Let's try a very thick slice of aluminium foil. Still not much of a shielding here. Now let's try the very thick slice of aluminium. Nope. That doesn't really help. Okay, let's try a thin piece of lead. And that, as you can see, helps. To some extent. Some of our well, one microcurie. <coughs> Let's try the very thick slice of lead. As you can see, much better. It shields most of the gamma radiation. Let's compare with uh, cesium-137. It has a slightly stronger gamma ray, 661 kilo electron volts, and it also has 1175 kilo electron volts of beta particles that it emits. Let's see. This is 0.25 microcurie. But as you can see, the reading is again much higher than from 0. Uh, sorry, than from one microcurie of barium 133. As I said, the Geiger Miller tube is um, able to detect beta particles much easier. It has a much higher yield in detecting them. Let's try the aluminium again. The very thin slice, nothing happens. A slightly thicker slice. Oh, there's some blocking, as you can see. So it actually does quite well. Let's try a very thick slice of aluminum. And as you can see, a lot of the emissions are blocked, so a lot of it must be obviously beta particles, because the 661 kilo electron volts gammas can still easily pass that. They are even harder than from the barium-133, which we checked before, and shielding them didn't work too well with this slice of aluminium, so what we can see here now is still the um, gamma rays, but the beaters seem to be largely shielded. Let's try a thick slice of lead again. Now 
That feels a lot, but as you can see, the 661 kilo electron volts gamma can still find a way into the Gamma tube easily, but the betas cannot. So I hope that was slightly educational. And if you've got any questions, feel free to ask as usual. Or if you've got any ideas for further videos of stuff that you want explained, just let me know.